we've got sound and we've got vision. Hey guys, Ed Bud here and welcome back to the channel. A bumper show for you today. One of my classic comparisons today between the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent Flyknit and the Air Zoom Alpha Fly Next Percent. I wish they'd come up with some names that are a bit shorter, like New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2. Yeah, it's not really that short either, is it? Later in the video, I'll discuss the outsole on the Rebel 2. I've been testing it out today in some wet weather, and that was one of the major downfalls of the original version. And of course, there'll be a classic Ed Bird musical interlude for you. Roll the, the thingy. The Tempo Next Percent, one of Nike's more expensive shoes in their running range at the moment, uses those classic tensile air zoom pods. Though it's been quite a divisive shoe, quite a different beast though in terms of fit and feel to the Alpha Fly. A few stats first for you. I measure this as about a 46 millimeter heel stack. It's big. Apparently it's a 10 mil drop on the shoe and it does feel quite drastically different to the 4 mil drop on the Alpha Fly. Big differences as well in terms of the surface area under the forefoot is about 12.3 centimeters here on the Tempo Next Percent and about 11.9 here on the Alpha Fly. So the Tempo Next Percent certainly does feel as if there's a slightly larger landing area. Quite a major difference back in the heel area as well. Tempo Next Percent's about 9.3 centimeters in the widest part and the Alpha Fly's almost 10 centimeters meters in the widest area. So a much more aggressive heel to toe drop in the Tempo Next Percent compared to the Alpha Fly. Weight wise in my UK size 11 it's 307 grams for the Tempo Next Percent which is 10.8 ounces and you've got 260 grams for the Alpha Fly 9.2 ounces. About 20 grams though or 0.7 of an ounce for the insole alone. Now don't forget you've got that Zoom X crushed insole inside this one so it does add a fair bit of weight it also adds a little bit of height to the shoe about five millimeters total before we get into the main part of the video guys if it's your first time here or you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications of when we launch those new videos and it helps us out a huge amount in terms of the youtube algorithm if you give us a thumbs up like if you're enjoying the video and also share it with your running buddies uppers first and it's night and day between the almost chainmail like fly knit material in the tempo next percent and that atom knit stuff in the alpha fly certainly much thicker and i would suggest slightly more containing although i don't think i'd want to wear the alpha fly in winter weather this one's at least a little bit more protective you can see straight through this one i need a bit of a thicker sock i think yeah the light just shines straight through it i think the fly knit here in the upper of the tempo next percent is close to that classic nike zoom fly fly knit that classic carbon plate shoe I think the atom knit that they've used here in the Alpha Fly lies somewhere in the middle between standard fly knit and the material that's used on the Next Percent 2. It's more like a mesh really than a knit. Atom mesh sounds, actually it sounds quite good. There's quite a bit of structure here. It's almost like a cage, I suppose. And there's a lot of reinforcement around the toe box. I find lacing on both super simple. Stick your foot in there and lace up and you're ready to go. You don't ever get any give of the laces over time they just stay exactly where they are certainly very simple lacing there and two of the best uppers really in nike's race shoes thus far when i say race shoes i mean the tempo next percent i guess is supposed to be a training shoe but you know we're splitting hairs here certainly two of the best uppers on nike shoes over the last year for me at least neither shoe really picks up much moisture when you use it in very wet weather and i found them both true to size there's not really an awful lot to break these two apart there's a little more padding here in the heel of the alpha fly and they've both let me reach some of my top paces in training and certainly both two of the most comfortable shoes i've used in training over the last 12 months i think i'll declare this one a tie midsole now Here's where it gets tasty. So Nike clearly state in one of their adverts that the nylon plate here in the Tempo Next Percent is to provide a little propulsion, but mainly to aid in the transition between sort of the heel through over the top of those AirPods. Aside from that, the React in the heel is very durable. I haven't had any issues really with the midsole of my pair of the Tempo Next Percent. It's proved exceptionally durable so far. I think aggressive heel strikers could absolutely marmalize the Alpha Fly in no time at all. I've seen loads of pairs of the 4% just destroyed. If you are a heel striker and quite aggressive one, that foam just couldn't hold up. We did see Nike adding more rubber to the Next Percent and also longer strips 
in the back of the Alpha Fly. I have to say that the Tempo Next Percent feels a lot more of an aggressive shoe to me. Maybe it's due to that heavier weight and the less rigid plate. Maybe it's a benefit from like the increased mass of the shoe, but with that 10 mil drop, it feels probably a little closer, I suppose, to the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. I think with the four mil drop in the Alpha Fly, some runners just weren't ready for it, it just didn't work for them. I think the distribution here is perhaps a little better for me and I think I'll probably enjoy running in this one more. Maybe that additional Zoom X foam in the Alpha Fly would be beneficial towards the marathon distance. After all, that's kind of what it's intended for, but I think it's less relevant at the half marathon distance down below. So for me on midsole, I think it's close, but I actually prefer the Tempo Next Percent over the Alpha Fly. Outsoles now. Similar in the forefoot, but a tad different in the heel. Obviously, the main difference here is that the rubber in the forefoot, the Tempo Next Percent, extends back behind the AirPods towards the arch of the shoe. You've probably seen online that has been a point of failure for some people's pairs. Mine seem absolutely fine though, no issues there. It almost feels like the AirPods are included as part of the midsole on the Tempo Next Percent, but they're very much their own thing on the Alpha Fly. Rubber traction on both shoes actually held up very well. I've got 100 miles into both of these, and they work surprisingly well on dirt and gravel. In fact, I found the rubber far more durable here in the Alpha Fly and the Tempo Next Percent than in the Next Percent itself. It's almost like a foam type substance there. And yeah, here it feels more like a thicker sort of rubber compound. I haven't had any stones try and wedge themselves in. They just can't seem to penetrate through. Whereas on the Next Percent, I've actually had some stones penetrate straight through the rubber and the foam and hit the plate. Both of these functioned quite well, in fact, in wet weather. I would suggest possibly slightly better than the Next Percent. I think I'll probably call a tie here on outsole given its intended uses on road and that some people have had some tearing in the rubber section of the Tempo Next Percent, still think that they pretty much, much of a muchness. What's that mean? It's a tie on outsole. Value now. I think hands down, if you want to experience Zoom X foam and AirPods, then the Tempo Next Percent's the way to go. I mean, it's still an expensive shoe, but vastly cheaper than the Alpha Fly. Few of us are championship racers, are we guys? And the Alpha Fly just doesn't seem to have had that impact that everybody thought it would. The old Tempo Next Percent's left me feeling fresh every time I've used it in training. The records show quick and fast times for me when I've utilized this shoe, and I can't help but recommend it in terms of value over the Alpha Fly, from a price, value, and versatility perspective as well. It's certainly a weird looking shoe, but I think the performances speak for themselves. I think the elephant in the room with the Alpha Fly really is the price. I think if they found a way of making it a tad cheaper maybe even just getting rid of a bit of the foam in the forefoot and the heel and just making the drop a little higher i think that would benefit a lot of people that's not to say i haven't enjoyed using the shoe it's certainly extremely propulsive and the fit is heavenly so that's my views on these two guys where do you stand on the tempo next percent and the alpha fly they really do create an interesting talking point let me know your thoughts and opinions guys down in the comments a quick running interlude for you hey guys Hope you're all doing fine out there. Hope you're all staying safe and yeah. enjoying your running. Took the Rebel 2s out today, mainly because one of the big problems with the Rebel 1 was that outsole, which is really slippery in wet weather. Well, that's exactly what we got today. Also, wet underfoot conditions. So I'll give them a bit of a test out, see how they hold up. I've got a feeling it'll be a much more positive experience this time, but we shall see. Gonna keep it relatively short today. Wanna to do a longer run tomorrow, so conserve some energy and uh, save it for tomorrow. Probably keep it to like about five miles today. Maybe throw in a couple of faster ones. That last one was about seven minutes a mile. Go up through the gears a little bit. Keep things ticking over nice and smoothly. Like a well-oiled machine. And here comes the rain again. Rather than do more miles in the week, I try and ease back a little bit more than I would do on any recoveries or slower miles. So bringing this one back to about, about 820 per mile, just letting the heart rate come back down a little bit. I'm not trying to set any new PRs or anything today. I'm just training, that's what I do most of the time, isn't it? I think certainly when I became more serious about my running, I think I probably ran too many miles at too fast a pace. You learn, don't you? Live and learn. Thanks to those of you that have been tuning in for the live streams. 
It's been really nice to chat to some of you in a sort of real time state. I will be trying to keep those going on Wednesdays and Sunday evenings from now on. So do tune in, it's much appreciated. Oh, just a quick intermission there. Great to see Trav Stray. Haven't seen him for a long time. Nice to have a chat to him. And I'm glad he's well as well. See all the other guys from the running club. Hopefully we can all get back to some sessions and some races and stuff soon. Seems like a long time. Too long. Hello, there's races in the pipeline. Martok 10k coming up. And I'll definitely go in for the Salisbury half marathon as well. Definitely. Held up pretty well, I've got to be honest guys, in terms of wet weather today. There's lots of standing water and lots of mud, and I've got to say that the Rebel 2 outsole is a vastly better one than on the original version. That rubber's just a bit more malleable. We've almost got like a reverse, I suppose, of the outsole that you see on the RC Elite. In the upper though, it's actually very similar to that shoe. I'm enjoying it just from a sort of daily perspective, really. I really like the fact today I could run some nice warm-up miles, and some recovery type paces in between, just easy pace, and then hit it for some sub seven minute stuff as well. I think I got down to sort of 6.30 something on the second mile. I didn't want to do too many miles today. I got a longer run tomorrow, so conserving that precious energy. Energy seems to become vastly more precious as you get older. So certainly enjoying this one, on the way up to about 50 miles. I'll probably take it to 100 before I do a main review for you. It was so nice to run today in some slightly better weather. It's just been horrific the last few days, but the wind's died down and I was able to put some reasonable paces in. Probably mix it up a little bit on the long run tomorrow. Keep the paces varied, some more sustainable type stuff, and then throw in a few faster miles as well, just to keep the engine ticking over. A musical interlude for you. If you can track it down, guys, on the 4AD label from 1998, there's a wonderful album by Mojave 3. It's called Out of Tune, but it's absolutely not out of tune it's a beautiful album very much of its time i suppose that indie kind of sound with some country tinges to it there's some very relaxed beautiful sounding songs here very warm sounding tunes i think mojave 3 may have supported bernard butler at some point on one of his tours i think that's maybe where i saw them or maybe their guitar player was playing with him or something i can't remember bit overlooked i think this group i don't know if they did an awful lot of material but certainly a really nice album to check out if you haven't ever heard of them mojave 3 it's called out of tune thanks for watching through to the end guys it's always appreciated if you haven't done so already please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos and don't forget to help the channel out too perhaps with some merchandise or you can hit that like button as well to get us out to more people my name's ed bud and i'll be seeing you